everyone, welcome back. So as you see in the title of this video, that today is the day. Today is the day. If you guys don't know, today is the day that I'm gonna be installing my big brake kit on my car. It's a wheel wood setup, a dual piston. And it's a big brake kit. Like I wanted to go something different. Everyone, they go to obviously, you know, Brembo's. So I wanted to try something different. It's a genuine big brake kit and it fits right on to the RSX. And enough of me talking, let's get started. As you can see, I only bought the calipers themselves. I didn't buy the rotors, but they came brand new, brand new outside the box. I bought it off a kid in Bridgeport. He's selling them for a crazy good price that I couldn't pass up. So what I'm gonna run them is, I'm gonna run them with the OEM Wheelwood brake pads and I'm gonna run them with OEM rotors for the RSX. Now let's get started, I'm gonna take off this wheel. I'm gonna start it one side at a time, so you know, you always gotta jack it up and always be secure. Get a three ton jack sand. They can hold up to a lot of weight, even for my little car. And now let's start taking these bolts off. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take out this caliper. We need to take out the caliper in order to get to the rotors to take them off also. And as you can see, I was overdue really big time. Cause you see all these grooves. These grooves are caused by the dirt or debris that gets into the brake pads that goes right onto the caliper. So let's get started and take them off. So basically, I'm gonna take out the whole caliper itself. I'm not gonna take out the little half piece. So basically there's two 17 millimeters in the rear and I'm gonna use my gun in order to take them off with a swivel. So my 3 8 didn't work, so I'm gonna move into my half inch, which is this one, for the top bolt. The bottom bolt came out like butter. <laughs> So what I recommend for you guys, you always take out the top bolt before you go to the bottom. I only took out the bottom because it was easier to access, so yeah. So let's take this off. So I took out the caliper, I put it right here just on the side, I put it on top of the lower control arms. Like at 
work i have this little caliper holder that just grip like it's like a little hook that you hook it down and you put it right on top of the strut but i didn't bring it with me unfortunately so right there is fine so i'm gonna go ahead and remove this i'm gonna hit it a couple of times with a hammer because over time you know the rust debris and everything builds up here so i'm gonna just hit it very quick with a hammer to take it off like that after four hits it comes right off so let me give you a rundown on these calipers since i do have a type s and that the rotors are slightly bigger than the base model unfortunately i cannot run the type s rotors with this car i have to go back to the base model because then it will line up perfectly with with the wheel wood brakes like i'll show you as you can see, there's a big size difference. But for more braking power, I would downgrade my rotor. You see the diameter inside? They're the same, but it's just the thickness for the rotor is different. With this one, the wheel wood brakes, they are perfect fitment for the base model rotors instead of the Type S, because then you have like a little gap right here and you don't want that. You want it to sit flush with the rotor. Okay guys, so I thought that the OEM boots would, you know, thread into the calipers. I was wrong. So it's a tight fit for them. I have to go get new hardware. As you can see, I'm in my daily. I have a 2003 Grand Cherokee. I have to go get new bolts for the caliper. I'm gonna quickly run to the local hardware store which is luckily down the street for me and I'm gonna match up the new bolts for the caliper and hopefully I find a match So yeah, I came to Levine's. They majority have mostly what I need, but if they don't, they don't, I guess. So I'm gonna go inside. They don't allow recording in here. So I'll let you know when I come back. So everyone, they failed me. They don't have it. So right now I'm going to Napa. I'm gonna go see if they have it in stock. Cause like the bolt size I need is a 12 by 1.50. I thought that was a really common bolt but looks like it's not. If Levine's don't have it and if Napa don't have it, I have to figure out a way to find one. So wish me luck and I'll get back to you guys when I'm there, okay? Okay, everyone. So Napa didn't have it. So right now I'm on my way to True Heart in Bethel and let's see if they have it because like I said before, I thought this was a really common bolt, but it looks like it's not. And I have to go literally like everywhere just to find it. So wish me luck at True Heart, see if they have it. Okay, everybody, so True Value didn't have Take it. Take a slight left turn onto Plum Trees Road. So I'm going to one more place. And after that, if they don't have it, then I don't know what to do. In half a mile, but turn left onto Walnut Hill Road. Out, so. I'll let you know when I get there and I'll let you know if they have it. Okay? So I see y'all when I'm there. Okay, y'all. We got it. We got the bolts. After five different stores, I finally found them. Bethel Hardware. And Bethel Hardware is the store to go to for your bolts. And no, that's not promoting them. It's just they had the bolts I needed and I'm really thankful for that. Now I'm gonna go home because for finding these bolts, it took me literally an hour and a half. And now let's go home and get these calibrated. And I'll see you when I'm there. Okay, guys.
guys after much much searching i found the bolts and i'm gonna put it on right now just as a mock-up and show you guys how it looks and you guys give me your opinion down in the comments to see if you like it or not because i personally love it i think they came out really nice i love how this says up right here it might be a little dirty but remember when you're putting on new brake pads and rotors always spray down the rotor itself because it has a lubricant on it preventing it from rusting out over time but always make sure you spray it down with brake cleaner that's why i got some for my job thank you to working at a dealership so right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to put in the brake pads for the caliper itself but after i tighten down the two bolts in the rear and always remember to torque them to the specifications just like on the website for acura so not loose when you're using them down the road or braking too hard so for these wheel wheel setup there is a bolt you got to take out in the back it's an allen key it is right here you have to take it out in order to remove the sliding pins to put the brake pads where they're supposed to be placed in the caliper and i'm going to take it off and i'm going to put the brake pads in and i'll show you right now and by the way sorry for the angle i don't have a stand or anything and i need to invest in one in order to better qualify my for my videos so what i'm going to use i'm going to use my milwaukee gun i love this gun because it has an adapter thing for it it has an adapter key for phillips flatheads allen keys even torque spits so i don't have to go and buy fancy stuff just use the gun just have to find the right size to pick so i found the right size the right size for it is a 4.5 allen key head i know that's not how what's the name of it but i call it that so what you do is you loosen the spit they take it completely out then with this clip, you gotta be careful because of the paint. You slide it up, and then you slide it back. And then you see these two sliding pins slide out with it. Then you have to slide it one more time over so you could fit the brake pads right in there. Right here. And let's slide them in. As soon as you see both of them lined up inside the caliper, just like so. Now you can slide the little, I don't know what they're called, but I'm gonna call it like a little lock clip, even though it's a big one, but I'm gonna call it that. And you gotta make sure you slide it into the holes that are on the brake pads itself, or they're gonna move around a lot when you are trying to brake and you don't want that. There goes one, and here goes the other. And then remember to slide it over carefully. And then they're both on. Now you take your little bolt. This is a locking bolt, it's just because so the little clip won't slide out on you. You take it, you thread it in, then you tighten it back up with your gun. And that's good. And yeah, and that's for one side. As you can see, the little locking rings in there, so it's a lock bolt and the pads are nice and secure. So basically the next procedure is you gotta reinstall the brake line. So you gotta carefully take it off of the old caliper making sure that no brake fluid leaks on your new one, freshly painted caliper. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now, but I have a tool to crimp it. It won't have the brake fluid come out. I bought this at AutoZone for 10 bucks. It came with three. It's really handy if you want to crimp off a line so it won't leak out on you. So right now I'm gonna crimp this line right now. So none of the brake fluid will come out. You can see I crimped off the line. Now I'm gonna take off the little bolt right here that has two copper washers on it to help secure the line. Luckily, Willwood, they provide you with a new nut and new copper washers also. Now let's get started. Always good to have a rag on the deck too to make sure when you're pulling it out that just like that if that happens just in case if any excess brake fluid comes out and you just tuck it up there and the brake fluid won't come out anymore here's the old caliper the old caliper is just really worn out and i think it was leaking basically what we're gonna do now we're gonna attach the line to the caliper so what you have to do is you gotta peel off this sticker and then you gotta use the bolts that they provide for you like i said for the crash washers and like i said before just make sure you're quick about it because this brake fluid really leaks a lot it really does so how you put on the little copper washers is, you put one on the bolt itself before this little bleeder, and then one after when the line's in between. So what you gotta do, you gotta take this off, take off the old nut. I like to keep them, because just in case you never know in the future, and you put the new one on, and then you put the new washer right here. Then you just securely put it right here. And word of advice, make sure that the two copper washers are always clean. If there's any little bit of debris inside, like the grease or any dirt, it will automatically leak as soon as you're trying to tighten it. And you don't want that because then it's going to leak everywhere. And you don't want that because you won't have as much of a breaking foot when you're trying to stop. So make sure you thread that all the way. Then you make sure it's tight. Then as soon as you tighten it down, you release the line with the brake fluid inside. I never found a video of how to bleed these guys, but it's just like a Brembo. So basically all you have to do is crack the bleeders on top and then let it bleed out like that. So basically the bleeder screws, they're all one fourth. You have to get an open end wrench that's the size one fourth, crack it open and let it bleed out. You could do it with two people, one the one on the break and the other one opening it or you could do the one man system so i got this tool from autozone also it was like 10 bucks it's a one-way bleeder system all you have to do is put this on top of the bleeder and there's a little hole on top for the air to escape and it even comes with a little magnet it needs to be above the caliper so the air can escape properly so all you have to put it over the bleeder just like so Make sure it's fully seated because you don't want any of that brake fluid leaking out. Then all you do is that you start pumping the brakes and you're going to see that the fluid goes through the line and fill up in the little guy. But that's completely fine. As soon as you see the whole line is like solid, 
that means the bleeding process is complete, but always make sure to top off your reservoir because you don't want any new air introduced to the system. And I'm gonna start this right now. So right now we're gonna crack open the bleeder. Always start from the inside, then you go to the out. Just like so. And now we start pumping. So when you finish with one, it's supposed to look like this, a solid, solid line. I know you can't see it, but look how much brake fluid came out. It's supposed to end up like this. As soon as you're done, you could close this up and then start on the next one. This one side's fully bled, moving freely still, and you can hear the little catch it got. And the system bled extremely well, just how I knew it would. So I'm gonna start doing the other side, but I'm gonna fast forward it because it's the same procedure exactly. And then we're gonna go on a test drive to see how the brakes respond. You guys ready now? I'm gonna fast forward through all this.
Okay, y'all, I just finished and I'm really, really hyped on them. Like I said, we're going to go for a drive. We are, but it's just, just look at that though. Finally got two piston calipers. Hyped. I'm hyped. Sorry for the wait, guys. I had to go inside and take a quick shower. You already know, working on your car, you get really dirty and you just want to clean up before you go on the drive. So, no. So let's go on this drive. I need to invest in a suction cup mount because I know damn well this is safe. Don't vlog and drive, y'all. Don't do it. Let's go. I like these. They break real good. I like how it breaks in. I like how it stops. Stopping power is nice with these real ones. So right now, I'm going to go get something to drink for the girls because you already know, like, too high. You know that they like their juice because in the house, they always finish it so quick. It's not even funny. It really is. But the breaking power on these are nice. I'm surprised because I thought it was going to feel the same, but... Looks like I was wrong. Oh. But yeah. But yeah. Like, thank you for staying to watch. If you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much. I know I'm still a beginner and I know my videos are still coming out like, you know, a little bit. Just give me time so I can improve my stuff and what I used to vlog because I'm still working out all the kinks a little bit because of this whole virus situation that's going around. So because of this virus situation, I was out of work for a couple of weeks, but thank God that I'm back. I start Monday and I will save up to get a new camera and hopefully a new computer, but all in time. So. I'm gonna close out the video. I see y'all. And remember, stand up for what you believe in and what project you wanna build. Like, you're gonna have haters. That's normally 101 about making or building a car. So just focus on you and focus on what you wanna do. And everyone just stay smiling, stay healthy, and always remember, stand up. Never let anyone push you down. Okay, y'all. I see you later. See you in the next video.